Hey guys, it's Celeste. <laughs> Alex says to use the fill button. <laughs> Alex says to use the fill button. <laughs> Alex says to use the fill button. All the streams looping. That's why. Alright, it's gonna be like a pretty short stream, like I don't even think it's gonna cross an hour, but it's just gonna be me looking back at the old artwork that I used to do and comparing it to what I do now and then talking about what I've done to improve, especially in such a short time span of around two years, so we'll, we'll look and I'll, we'll, we'll show you, I'll show you the starting point as well as our ending point so like that, let's take a trip over to my Instagram let's scroll down to the first post I made when I decided to start taking my art like seriously which was here there's a small like story behind it it's so, like if you look before this right you'll see i did like really really stylized work like they were it was very like manga inspired very you know comic book illustration style uh, because i really wanted to do comic book art as a high schooler like i looked at that and i was like this is what i want to do so i just hyper focused on it instead of like branching out and exploring new things uh, and that really stunted me for a long time uh, especially with art because even if you want to learn like want to do work like some of my idols at the time and still are honestly like, like if you want to do work like Kishimoto or like uh, Toriyama right you still need to understand like the fundamentals of drawing and painting and stuff like that like even their simplified characters like there is a science behind them right they're not just they didn't just like draw and was like this is now my style like they 
they have the fundamentals down. They understand what like constructs a face. They understand what constructs a body. How the figure works. And because they they you know understand it so well, they're able to adjust it and create these vast landscapes and characters that we've all like come to grow and love growing up with. So the first piece I made, right, aside from all these, which were just me doing art on and off uh, for the time being, the uh, first piece that I made that seriously reset was the one before the official post, which happened, I think, uh, the day before. So July 23rd, 2020. I made this piece and uh, it was supposed to be a book cover for like the next chapter of the story I was writing. Um, the problem is, is that it was not up to standard as to what I wanted. You see, when I when I made this, I thought it would come out a lot like uh, Ross Draws' image because I followed one of his one of his tutorials, and when I finished, I was like, "Well, mine doesn't look anything like that," and I didn't I didn't understand why at all. Uh, like I followed everything he had done, but digitally it just it came out a mess, and that was because I just didn't really understand. Oh, excuse me, I didn't understand what I was doing. Uh, I didn't understand like what made you know art tick. I guess you could say what made good art, good figurative art, good portraits. I didn't know anything about them. I didn't even understand how to construct a face properly, or like what you know, like how to break down the face into simpler shapes. I didn't understand that. Um, and so I made this piece, and this, although at the time it was like at the time I wasn't even proud of this. Like at the time when I had finished this. Like, I may have posted it, but that was just because I had already spent the time to do it. Um, at the time, I was comparing this to Ross Tran's work, and I was just like, this doesn't, like, it doesn't add up. Like, how am I supposed to compete? And so, I sat down and I thought to myself, like, even though, like, Ross's work is so, like, anime-inspired, it still looks so realistic. And this was before, this was before, like, I saw, like, I was active on Instagram. Around this time, I didn't really go on Instagram much, like, I, I posted very rarely, so I never really had experience to, like, seeing, you know, these amazing graphic images being created, these amazing paintings being made, uh, so I was just really stubborn, uh, but when I saw that Ross Draws video for the first time that YouTube recommended me, I was, in, like, blown away by his work at the time, and I just, I wanted, I wanted to get to that level, I, and I wanted it immediately, like, <laughs> As we all know, realistically, that's not going to happen. But I wanted it, and I didn't know how to get there. And so, that's how this piece came to be. It was just me trying to rush and get to get to the skill level that Ross Train was at. Try and, like, I don't know. I'd see him up on, like, the like this giant cliff that seemed unclimbable. And I'd try to jump to reach him. Uh, not knowing that, like, behind them were just several steps to get to that area. Um... So yeah, this was the mark. I guess this was the this was the this was the ignition. This was the this was the spark. I started it. The next day, I decided, as like as I was watching more and more Ross Train videos, like I stayed up that whole night just watching Ross Train videos. Um, as I was watching, I saw that you know even though like his style was so like you know cartoon and anime inspired, uh, it, it, still, it was still based like on realism, like. He still knew what he was doing when he drew realistic portraits. And that kind of blew me away because at the time, I was like, I was someone who really believed that an art style is just something you're born with. Like, you are, you come into the world and you learn to draw and however your hand draws things, that's just how it's, how it's done. You can't really do anything about it. So like, if you are not someone who is like innately good at doing like realistic art, then there's no reason like, it's, it's just not for you like you can't ever learn it and like that 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 viewpoint has dramatically shifted for me <laughs> um but the reason i thought that was because i had never put any effort into actually studying art um i just like i was someone who believed art was a talent like you you are born with the ability to do art and even if you practice like the talent that you have just gets developed so it's just developing your further style um but now like even like now i know that's just it's that's not true art is a skill Art is something that anyone can develop. It may take some people longer than others, uh, but it is something that, you know, can be learned with enough dedication. And luckily for me, I'm a relatively fast learner. Uh, so uh, when I started this, I like started to improve quite quickly. 
um, and in two years time I'm here where I like I'm out where I am now but that's largely in part to the insane amount of online uh, resources available so let's look at like the first post of July 24th 2020 so today but two years ago uh, this was the day after well, I guess the evening after um I had seen all those Rostros vi videos stayed up all night and I decided it was time for me to like to study so you know I picked up a pencil and I was like I need to draw realism and draw realistically so that way I could draw you know my characters and anime figures you know better and make them look as nice as his were um so I can draw pretty pictures um but like as you can see like it, it was me just it wasn't me understanding what I was doing it was me just continuously drawing like how I would draw something but trying to make it more realistically like not more realistic trying to make it look more realistic and you know after practicing for so long I know now that's not how that's, that's not how this works <laughs> like yes it is possible to push something toward a degree of realism right if you know what's happening if you don't then trying to like achieve realism is going to seem impossible for you uh and this is just the finished product like it, it's it's not bad but it's definitely not good either like there's a lot of fundamental mistakes in just like shape determination like in the hair like what are these lines they shouldn't be there um she doesn't have a neck because i was like self-conscious and couldn't draw a neck at the time didn't know where to connect it uh there's a lot of scratchy lines here because i wasn't confident the blending looks like i took an airbrush on paper <laughs> it just needed a lot of work um so uh i started studying from then because after i drew this i was proud of it for about like 10 minutes and then i just had a complete turnaround you know as per usual as like what artists do with their work uh i was proud at the time but yeah uh i like, after like 10 minutes 15 minutes i just i look back at it and i look back at like a raw straws video and my entire self-esteem was just like demolished because i was sitting there and i was like how does he achieve this amount of like quality and beauty in his digital work that i can't even get on my traditional work like i don't i don't understand i didn't understand uh and so you know i kind of sat down there and had a, a thought with myself and i was like i'm i'm like I'm, I'm not good at art like and that's that's when it really hit me well it, it hit me then but it didn't really hit me until about uh i'd say like maybe like a monthish later um it hit me when i had found someone by the name of uh angel ganev which if you know him then you know him she's so cute though <laughs> she was based off a reference photo but i definitely like could have done the model a lot more justice at the time um but like it's just it, it it's very sloppy and it's something that i guarantee you that if i were to teach a a high schooler how to properly like approach like a study like this uh she like whoever i like i taught would be able to like blow what i drew out of the water like decimate it i mean like just fireworks like it, it'd be insane and that's because i like i understand what i'm talking about now uh in contrast to like back then when i didn't i appreciate that you think it looks good <laughs> uh but yeah it didn't really dawn upon me and like it never really set in until like i think it was like a month later uh, after like pointless studying of just doing like studies and like thinking i'd never get there like not knowing how to properly study uh i found a channel uh, i found angel ganev's channel and if you know angel ganev you know that he is very popular for creating doodle warriors and then creating the portrait accelerator class now i never took the classes um uh probably because i couldn't afford it at the time but um when i found his videos they were kind of like like a ray of light in like that dark dark area because i was sitting there thinking i'd never be able to like hit any sort of quality whatsoever and it wasn't until i heard his words where he would like look at his camera and he would roast his audience for comedic purposes but there were meaning behind his words when he did um and he would just constantly re-emphasize that like if you are painting something or drawing something and you paint it in a certain manner uh but 
you are unable to like the way I, I see it, if you are unable to adjust that slider of the manner you're painting it in then that's not necessarily an art style that's a lack of information and that really hit me like him telling me that my art style was me being ignorant to information uh, that I needed to know to succeed as an artist that is what hit me and made me realize that I didn't know enough uh, about what I was doing and like really like that really put me into overdrive mode um when those words sunk in i immediately began to study like i started to look up youtube videos as to how like how to draw something i thought i had the basic information of how to do i started to like like look at videos explaining how to properly do it something i thought something i've been doing for years since like seven years old is now something where i like i have to sit down there and tell myself i am officially a beginner like i i don't like i don't know anything i approached art as if I did not know anything at all. I completely disregarded all the information I had known because a lot of the information I had prior were from like art books that you get at the library, those how to draw manga books. And if you've seen a lot of those books, they are notoriously bad <laughs> because they don't teach you how to draw. They teach you how to draw something in a, like they teach you how to draw something a certain way. So they don't teach you what you should know. They teach you, oh, just do this, this, and this. It's like a lot of the, like the tips that you see on like TikTok for drawing things like no offense to them but like a lot of the tips I come across on TikTok are things that are not really addressing fundamental skills but things that are like glamorizing what you were doing wrong uh so I completely like had like a mental reset I told myself that I could not draw I told myself I didn't know how to paint I told myself that I am a beginner I am a baby a, a child a literal child in this i am coming into this no prior knowledge and i began to study i don't have the studies on me like they're not posted because a lot of them were like so bad that like i couldn't i wouldn't have posted them uh but uh i do have a lot of like key pieces that i made as i was studying uh, and i'll show you what i was doing to improve so we're gonna ignore these pieces because these pieces were made before i found angel ganef and you can tell that like they have like no real improvement to them uh, because these were done before i even started studying right right these were done when i had the epiphany and these were done before i started studying from here on out we're gonna start looking at pieces that i did as i was studying um to see like how i improved so the first thing i did was i looked up videos as to how to draw and a huge channel that helped with this was proco uh, for figuring out like fundamental basis as to how to construct a head, uh, how to construct a body, you know, figure dynamics, explaining how all that works. Um, and a lot, I, I don't have to say anything about Proko. If you know who Proko is, like you should know who Proko is if you were an artist, especially if you want to improve. They are one of the best channels out there for helping beginners, intermediates, experts alike. Like they will, they, they really do point you in the right direction. Um, but I started to construct, uh, to relearn how to draw the head. Uh, and I began to study the Loomis method of drawing heads, uh, which is like just very simple. Uh, you start with the basic sphere and then you cut into it and you draw as you go. And this really trains you to start seeing like drawing the head, but drawing the head with its planes into consideration and with its forms into consideration. Uh, a huge mistake I made when doing this piece was that I wasn't even aware that the way an artist sees a head is like essentially you're looking at a head as a a geometric shape like there's a circle but around that you're putting a bunch of geometric shapes that will be sharp originally and then smoothing them out and curving them as you go and as you cut into like this the shape to create this interesting silhouette uh, I did not understand that at the time uh, but as I you know watched more videos by Proko uh, it started to make more and more sense. Um, I watched a bunch of different methods as to how to draw the head and just kind of combined a bunch. So I studied them separately. And then I took the parts that worked for me from each one and then just kind of meshed them together to figure out how I like to approach, you know, designing a head. Or like, or like wow, that voice crack. Or like, you know, drawing a head from the ground up. Um, yeah, so that's how, that's how it began, right? I completely ignored painting. Uh, and I ignored painting because I just started painting and these are the pieces that came out um, uh, So yeah, I kind of focused more on how to draw now those aren't here uh, But no, they they will I can't really show you guys that 
uh, but I will show you what the end product of me studying how to draw properly was, uh, along with like me preparing myself for painting. Um, to prepare myself for how to paint, I started to study the you know the Asaro head uh, because you know I was a huge, huge like fan of Angel Ganev at the time because he was someone who was like a mentor to me, and he would always repeat that you if you lack structure in your drawing then you like you, your drawing's not gonna get very far and your painting's not gonna get any further if your drawing lacks structure so i started to combine the loomis method uh with the asaro head uh, so i would draw these these like heads essentially but instead of them being rendered like finished pieces uh they would be a loomis head with the eyes in place so a loomis head with the with the eyes in place uh, something like this uh, It would look like this a Loomis head with the eyes in place I would do a bunch of these right from different angles just to understand how to place them and then I started to Cut out the planes of the head. So if we look at the Asaro head, I started to uh, Place in the plane. So if like I drew a head from this angle I would draw this line in cut out the eye attach it to the uh, the, the socket where it connects over here uh, and then cut out the rest of this, you know, get the shapes right. And then I do that for the other side as well. So that way I could get a good grasp of uh, what's happening. <laughs> Thanks, Michaela. It's no problem. Uh, good luck, good luck. Um, I would cut out uh, a lot of, like, the key shapes uh, just to understand what was, uh, what was going on on the piece. Um... So yeah, after doing that for months and months and feeling like I wasn't really making anything creative, right? I, I started to move on because one thing I learned from Angel Ganev, uh, the many things this that man has taught me. I don't know where he is now, and like he always should come back. But the many one of of the many things he taught me was that if you want to like understand something and improve quickly, you need to tackle something one at a time. So don't just like run into a painting and do like try and focus on 12, 13 different things. Isolate what you're focusing on. Like, isolate what you're working on. And to me, that was structure at the time. My drawings didn't have structure, so I started to isolate, you know, the planes of the head. Because realistically, the face is where will draw the most attention on any painting of, especially of a figure, which is what I really wanted to do. Um, so I started to, to isolate the planes of the head, studying them that way. Uh -huh. And this was the result of all those months of me like practicing, uh, just getting structure in the drawing. Uh, I drew this uh, using the same method I just talked about. So when I got the reference image, I, you know, drew out the head, right? And then drew out the basic shape, uh, lined up the eyes, cut into it around here, cut into it around here, and then placed in the shadows, not the shadows, uh, cut into it here, cut into it here, got the head shape, all right? And then I looked back at the reference and then placed in the shadows, but I placed them in not as a one-to-one, -one, but with what aligned with the diagram, or I guess with the uh, with the planes that I drew, um, and that really helped because um, it helps you to start seeing the head for like what it actually is and how to like truly draw it, um, and that will aid you so much when it comes down to painting. And painting heads is still something like I really struggle with. Like I'm painting heads is a tough, tough thing. Um, but yeah, uh, these, if we look at these three pieces, these were made as I was studying all the techniques for heads. So they look better, um, especially this one. This was heavily inspired by Kushina Bulia, which uh, one of my favorite artists. Uh, I began to, after I found Ross Draws, I began to look at more and more artists. This is something I highly recommend. Look at as many artists as you can because they may have something about their work that you really like and you don't want to miss out on that to try and incorporate that into your work. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's basically the first step was just telling myself that I need to let go of my pride and ego, uh, and then, you know, start to study. Uh, now, all of these here are school projects, right? So I didn't really, you know, do anything during these, but during this time when all these were happening, I started to get more and more acquainted with Photoshop. And like how it works uh, by photo editing uh, and that was kind of like my gap closer right so instead of like jumping from traditional to Photoshop and being super overwhelmed uh, as I was doing these I was understanding how the brushes work in Photoshop as I was making these understanding how lighting works inside of it understanding how layer modes work understanding how clipping masks work and yeah uh, they as I got better and better in that 
I sort of just combined the two and jumped into digital art. So here's one of the first pieces I did. And I'm actually gonna type in like deviant art right here. Uh, just so that way we can like properly see what is like actually happening. Let me close these. Uh, okay. Mm, kind of use deviant art as just like a tracker for the time being. Um, yeah, this is one of the first pieces I did. It was a commission for uh, my cousin, uh, and it was it's very good for what I did at the time. I think it still is pretty good as a graphic image, just not something I would do now, um, unless I'm just sketching. Uh, but this was like the 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 peak ability of my my rendering at the time, and you're gonna hear rendering a lot because that is something that I genuinely struggled with for the longest time was trying to understand what it means to truly render or something right like i was trying to put a hard cap definition on it and it's something i can never find and trust me if you were trying to find a way to render uh the most simple way i can put it is to push what you have as far as you can um when i was learning like how to quote unquote render i didn't understand you know how people got these like smooth transitions i didn't understand how like people were able to do this and you will, i'll talk about that further and further down the line but just know that this was the first piece i did with understanding of how photoshop worked at the time uh, understanding layer mask, understanding clipping mask, right? And all that. So I made this piece. Uh, and then, you know, more time passes. I keep studying, but just don't upload anything because I was, you know, in classes in school at this time. And there was one day I decided to try and paint an original piece because from that, my goodness, uh, from where I was at at the time, I was just doing studies, like constant studies over and over and over, and they, they weren't even being shown. So I decided to try and paint an original piece and put everything I learned to the test at the time. Uh, and this was what I got. Um, at, when I had made this, uh, I had studied, basically I studied shape language, uh, the Asaro head, and drawing with shapes rather than lines. That is something that is very important that I think a lot of artists should take into consideration. So when you watch, um, uh, like, like masters like Wallop and Guez do things, right? You are very tempted to do exactly what they do, which is just, you know, they have a very, very, very rough sketch, like very rough sketch. And then they jump into value blocking and then they jump into, you know, lighting and then they just paint on top of it and they get this amazingly like rendered piece, beautiful piece. Um, yeah, if you are new, I highly, please, please do not do that because you're just going to get super frustrated with yourself because that's a hard way to work. Like, it, I think it is the, the second hardest way of working, uh, aside from, um, like, aside from jumping straight into, like, blocking on the painting, blocking in the painting, and then, like, color blocking, uh, which is something, color blocking, and then refining, right? That, that's three steps, and that is the hardest method of painting there is. Um, I would recommend you learn how to properly sketch first and learn proper shape language, and proper shape language is super super important not only because like it gets off like emotions across as you get further and further down the line of illustration and concept art uh like shape in characters basically determine like who they are in their personality but proper shape language will allow you to get cleaner sketches it will help you with your brushwork going down later down the right line it'll help you express things better uh and it makes your images just cleaner overall right uh if you have proper shapes, it is a lot easier to edit an image or to draw a clean image in like maybe a pass, like one or two passes, rather than having to have this super chicken scratch like line work and then trying to refine that. Uh, be confident, learn to be confident in your line work, right? And just, if you put a brush stroke down, make it fast, make it long, and then make a shape out of it right each time as much as you can and that'll really really help you uh this was the first piece i did like primarily focusing on shape language uh as you can see it's very very graphic like she's very sharp there's not a lot of gradients i think the one gradient i have is literally on like her knee back here but it's a very sharp image um uh there's not really much else to say about this aside from this like there's not a lot of soft edges in this and it still works because the shape language is so good um and this is something you will learn as you study like planes of the head as you study you know all that but yes that 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 has to be like 
the next most important thing. I don't even know what point we're on anymore. I'm just rambling. But we keep going. Uh, I attempted to, like, you know, do a Ross Draw style illustration. But at this time, I still didn't really understand everything I was doing. Like, um, I didn't understand how stylization works. Um, and so, you know, uh, the, like, I, I kind of just defaulted back to what I did before to where, like, like, I didn't know how to paint lips. Like, and this is an artistic choice. I just didn't know how to paint the lips. So I just left them out. Um, like, the eyes look great here because I understood eyes at the time and how to really, like, stylize them and what, like, goes on with them. But the lips and the nose, I didn't know what was actually happening because all I had studied before was just really constructing the head and getting those planes down. So I began to, like, try and study them more. Uh, this was a portrait I did of a friend, uh, you know, uh, focusing mostly on uh, the planes of the head and showing form through very little, like, gradients. Like, as you can see, it's a really hard-edged portrait, yet it still come reads as, like, super soft. Uh, like, there's not a lot of blending. The only real blending that's happening is her forehead highlight. Uh, but aside from that, there's not a lot of blending in this. Uh, it's super, it's really hard-edged, right? Very blocky. Uh, and the fact that it works proved to me that, like, I made progress. I didn't see it at the time. Uh, but the fact that this image works when looking back to it proves to me that I made progress as I was studying because I was able to, like, create this almost fully finished image based off these super hard brush strokes that don't really blend into each other but because of their direction because of the stroke economy and because of the like the the, the forms that i am following like it, it came together and read very well uh we go into later in like you know my school year and i got assigned more and more projects and that just means more and more practice more and more figure practices so i just got to practice more and when i made this piece for my midterm i started to understand like what, like, I guess what rendering really was, right? Like this is when I started to understand, okay, how does someone render? Uh, now I do go to art school, I'm still going, uh, but a lot of my growth happened like prior and or, or outside of class, right? So the only things I really have that I made for class on here was a lot of these like traditional work so this one this one this one these are from my figure drawing classes and i definitely would not be able to paint figures the way i do if it weren't for that figure drawing class but anyone can do what we do in that figure drawing class i do not recommend paying thousands of dollars to do it <laughs> you could go to google you can find a generator for it there's a lot of great art accounts out there who make references and you just set yourself on a time limit to warm up about maybe like i don't know like 30 40 seconds a sketch and just speed run speed run the image to the best of your ability that's the best way i can put it you look at the image and you try and find what makes the pose work right when you find what works what makes the pose work you draw that and then you construct around it as fast as you can you need very little information to have it make sense right uh, and i'll show you some examples of that um but yeah uh, here is when I started to understand what rendering really was and then I just got further and further into the year and more projects happened and I started to you know draw more and clearly like drawing more and like you know doing these you know things more will help you understand uh, this was a project I did for the end of this year actually and um, there's not really a lot to say about this it's just I saw it and I took everything I had been teaching myself uh, prior uh, to you know being in art school and applied it to my like my current uh to like what i was practicing in class and like yeah that's really about it that's all that really happened here this i probably i would be able to do something like this if i had not like gone uh i won't say that because a lot of the professors there are very helpful uh they do answer questions and they do help you out when you're struggling but yeah like this is all just from intro level classes these aren't advanced classes that i'm doing this is doing this in these are intro classes i'm doing this in so it's I, I wouldn't say it's locked off to anyone like this is something anyone can do like, genuinely and i'll show you a great example examples as we go uh so i started to branch out into backgrounds you know after i figured out what rendering is speaking of which before we move on what is rendering uh to put it in short rendering is because this is an answer I was, I have been struggling to like find. So if, 
anyone out there watches this and they really need like the the help or if they're really confused as to what rendering is just take this in consideration rendering is just how you view light and shadow on a subject uh so i talked about this in the prior like previous stream but let me pull up an example here of like i don't know like a like a I don't know, shaded cube or something like that uh I'll go Q3, this looks like. Uh, I wish I could find one. Um, I can't find a good example right now, and I really want to find it. Okay, this, this one works. Uh, if you look at this cube, you'll see there's like three sides happening here, right? Where's the light, there's the dark, and then there's this, right? Now this is a hard edge surface, so it, like there's not really like a lot of wiggle room here. But if this were, let's say, a sphere, right? And you had the light over here, right? And then the darks underneath, and then that's it, the lights, the midtones, and then the darks underneath, right? It's up to you to decide where that cutoff point is. And this is super important as you get further and further down the line for painting things and drawing things, because eventually when you're done with all your studies, right? You're gonna pick up more complex subjects and when those complex subjects come along you need to be able to make those difficult decisions like if it's not like a fine the fine line area right then you need to make the choice for your reference like let's say like it's a really light shadow like right here you need to choose where your cutoff point is and how much you want for that to be like in shadow and how much is in mid-tone and then dark and then lights you know because realistically, as you, as you move on and get better and better, art just becomes decision making. It's just, okay, can you make the right decisions for this image and have it work? Uh, as real all it becomes. Uh, this is just some background work that I did. Um, uh, Devin L. Kurtz, another fantastic artist. Not that I need to say anything, because if you're watching me, you probably already know her. Uh, great visit of artist. Uh, I watched her tutorial as to how to approach, you know, you know, uh, backgrounds and nature and stuff like that. Uh, then, like, I applied it. Uh, nothing else to really say. Um, just more practices of me trying to expand my horizons because I work with figures so much. Uh, and then this is where we really get into, like, another huge jump in my work. Um, here it was very good, right? But this was traditional. Like, I could not, like, even if I tried to do this digitally, I wouldn't understand how. Uh, here is when we get to a huge jump in my work, and that is 100% in thanks to Christoph Young and his incredible uh, arts, like art uh, program he has, free to watch on YouTube. So, if you were at an intermediate level to where you would, you can do this, um, like traditionally, uh, stuff like this, you know, super like stuff like that if you can can do something like that working for a reference traditionally i highly recommend you watch his youtube series and you subscribe to his youtube channel because he will take that and then have you and teach you how to apply it not only like digitally but how to like how to ingrain it in your head as to what you're actually doing there because here it's reference copying you're being a you're being a printer and like absolutely no like no shots to anyone who does realistic work uh, consistently and works in references all the time. That's fine. You're supposed to work in references all the time. Even I work in references. Uh, everyone works in references, especially like even in a what is the word I'm looking for? Original images, like things that are not photographs that you're not copying. Everyone works from references. Um, but um, it's still important to know, like to to pick up and learn things from that reference image you're, you're using. And so his art school will teach you the basics of painting, um, of painting skin and painting you know uh just in general what you need to understand uh to make things work so here we have like some of my attempts while i sat through his lectures and lessons and listened uh yeah uh basic concept being explained stuff like that so we have the simple rule of pinch and poke you know creases and ridges folds uh veins value and then color so, if you're new, uh, I don't recommend Christoph Young. Great artist, but his work is for someone who can already, like, who 
is more than comfortable working, you know, with themselves. Uh, but yeah, this was the first piece I made applying uh, what I had learned from the Christoph Young, um, Christoph Young video. Uh, and this was done like directly after I had sat through this video. Uh, and I really tried to implement everything he talked about. So try to use creases and ridges. Um, we're gonna. I went try to use creases and ridges. Uh, started in grayscale, of course. Got the sketch down. Use creases and ridges. You know, I value blocked and then had nice gradients. Creases and ridges. Uh, the veins. Uh, yeah, pinch and uh, pinch and poke. I just tried to implement as much of as I could. And yes, this was also done from a reference. The reference was actually my own arm. <laughs> uh, believe it or not. Uh, so yeah. Uh, he's a fantastic teacher, honestly. I can't sing his praise enough. Uh, because he helped me really like escalate my work. Um, elevate my work, that's the word. Uh, just some stream things. Now this was the second piece I had did. And this was made uh, basically using the exact same thing I did here. It was the exact same concept, uh, just applying it to a different reference. Uh, now, don't let this image fool you. This is a painted image, yes, but it is also like I think I think I believe it's matte painted. Uh, so if I right uh, click out over here, so everything you see here from here is painted on, right? So everything up to here is painted, right? However, uh, there are some things that are matte painted on there. So, um, for example, the water here, super realistic. This entire section here, uh, yeah, I didn't paint that. This is a photograph that I took and then cut out and then painted over and then painted around like this back portion. Just copied what was here, painted around this back portion. And then here I just have globs of color because I don't want this taking away from this. Now, this image is not perfect. Like, it definitely still needs a lot of work. Like, here, I probably should have rendered out this water a little bit more. But just this, this is also matte painted. The textures on the, I guess, the pattern. Not the texture, but the pattern on the on the Yukata. Uh, yeah, uh, not not painted. It's, it's matte painted. So that means I painted in the lights and I painted this without the patterns. And then I found pattern textures online and then meshed them and warped them to fit this, right? And then I painted over them uh, to make it look better. So, uh, really simple thing. It speeds up your work time. If I hadn't done that, I'd probably still be working on this piece now. <laughs> um, but yeah, just another thing to take into consideration. There are faster ways to work. However, I don't recommend doing this if you don't think you can actually paint what you were doing. I know for a fact I could paint this, or draw this. Uh, the problem is it would take far too much time, uh, and I want to work on other things. So we did this to save time. Matte painting, huge time saver. Um, if you're of like a level to where you were, you believe your uh, skills are more than good enough, uh, I 100% suggest you start matte painting. It'll save you a lot of time. Uh, Sakimi Chen does it in a lot of her work. Um, a lot of professional concept artists do it. A lot of uh, splash art images. Eh, yeah, some splash art images do it. Mostly conceptual conceptual splash art, which I feel like is a contradictory statement, but it's it does exist, and yes, they do use matte painting. Um, there's a whole YouTube channel for it, but I can't remember the man's name, which I feel really bad for because I've watched so many of the videos. Um, but yes, I highly recommend looking into it if you are at a high enough level. Um, and so now we get into like my most recent body of works, right? And I, s what I've been focusing on recently was instead of training myself how to draw, which is what the last two years were, right? Me learning how to properly draw. Now I'm learning how to paint. So if you look at like a lot of my like the works in the past, right? The ones that were really good were primarily drawings, not painting. So drawing, right? Applying what I know from drawing, uh, you know, drawings. A drawing you know um, so now we're getting into like painting painting right and also a combination of the two but what I do from here on is I start to focus on you know painting things now this is just me doing you know gesture work you know making sure I don't lose the skills I've already accumulated uh, so I, my free time I'll just warm up by doing these like 
30 second sketches that get the pose across and all that. Uh, very quick, very loose, uh, trying to spend too much time on it, you move on. Um, but yeah, we started to try and approach things more like paintings. So, you know, focusing on doing big shapes and letting the shape work uh, speak in our work rather than having line work decide anything. Uh, yeah, there's not really much else to say. Painting in itself is a whole other beast if you're not used uh, to seeing like a painter. And I think the phrase that I heard, I think it was from Proko, but is was it from Proko? No, it was from Marco Bucci, but it was, I think it was to, to be able to draw properly, you have to see like a painter. And then to be able to paint properly, you have to see like a sculptor. Um... And it's very true. It rings very true. Like when I learned to start seeing, you know, the planes of the head and everything like that when drawing and, you know, just basic planular forms, uh, drawing became so much easier. Like I could look at something and break it down into its simple shapes and, you know, just draw it. No problem. Uh, painting, you to, to see like a sculptor, you need to really understand like how the form moves, how the form wraps. And that's something that, you know, I think a lot of beginners kind of avoid um, like their work may just be uh, like coloring, right? So it'll be line work uh, and then color the underneath the line works, but then they don't know where to go from there because they don't know how the, the form works. And that's the same case with me. Like I, I was there for a long time and I still am partially there. Like I, it's just that I'm there, but I'm able to really solve those complex questions that I ask myself now. Um, and that's just because the only way you can really do that is just to study like like unlike unlike drawing to where you can teach yourself to break down the shapes and maybe get away with it to paint you you need to understand how that form wraps and the only way to do that is to like physically draw that form break it down study it uh, and so i've done a lot of studies like a lot of studies. not they're not all here but a lot of studies have been done um this was one of the studies uh it's a simple study. Uh, I do a lot of my studies in black and white because it, you know, will take a lot less brain power because I don't have to, you know, juggle the color, uh, color balancing of things. Along with the value, I can just solely focus on value and then just apply a gradient math to the work after. But yeah, something like that. Uh, nice and simple. Uh, here I'm training myself to teach, like, not to teach, but to see like a painter. Um, it's very, very different. So to see the overall silhouette of what I was doing, and there's a stream about this, uh, I did a part two to the stream, but I'm basically just looking at the references, which I believe are here, and then deciding where I'm going to put the shadow lines, the dark lines, uh, and then, you know, leaving them in with the base color and the base value and trying to construct this very readable image uh, from it. And this is something that, um, like I started doing after watching Sam Das Arts uh, because he he recommended it, and this will really train your brain to to see in those from those big shapes to those small shapes. And if it's if it's readable as readable as these are, right, then you're doing something right, right? Because these are these are two values right now, but the image is still more than readable. You still understand what's happening inside of it, and that's really what you're aiming to do. Uh, train your brain to see like a painter. Uh, so, let's get into a few things. Uh, we're going to jump to this one first, because this one happened before all of these. It's just that it wasn't finished before all of these. These were some sketches I did along, you know, the side, just to, you know, make sure I could still, you know, figure draw, try and create some original images. Uh, yeah, this is also in the same boat. There's another sketch I did along the side with really basic rendering, like super basic. If I wanted to push this more, I would have to paint over top of this, start, you know, getting rid of some of the line work to, in order to represent it with, with brush strokes. Uh, another sketch. But yeah, let's get into this one. Uh, study of a Zine Chin post that I, that I did, uh, the Taoist, uh, it's a study of that piece. And this, the reason I chose this piece to do was because, uh, it was done in the same way, like there's a video on YouTube of Xinxin painting this. And it was done in the same way that, like this, this is done it. 
So he starts off with just this huge silhouette, and then he starts to cut into it, and then he value blocks inside it, and then he color blocks inside of it. Uh, so this was the perfect study for me to, you know, put everything I had been isolating here with working with these to the test and combine it with color work over here. And there are quite a few things I have, you know, left to do. Uh, like it's not perfect, but it is a huge leap for me because this shows that even though I may not think, you know, it's working, uh, by doing this and being able to work in this form, I, I, it proves that I am making progress because not even like maybe like a year ago, this workflow seemed almost unachievable to me, right? And I look as I am working and I see myself just make the progression. And it always makes me want to keep going, makes me want to keep pushing. Uh, so yeah, um, that really covers about it. Uh, as for currently, uh, what I have been working on, um, it's just, you know, I streamed it, it's head studies, and I said it then, but even though I study the planes of the head, right, I know how planes of the head work, uh, heads are still my weakest, weakest point, because I tend to leave them very undetailed in, like, personal work, so, um, something like, I don't know, like, like this, even though, like, it, it's a, it's a good head, a good bust drawing, uh, but, you know, like the lips need a lot of work. I didn't I clearly didn't know what I was doing there. Like there's no eyelashes, there's no upper eyelid. Uh, the only reason this works so well is because like the brush strokes I used were very good at the time. So that's what I've been doing a lot here recently. I have been sitting down and doing a bunch of different head studies, you know, just to try and understand how they work. But yeah, and now to close it out, I wanna give a little bit of motivation to like everyone out there who is like quote unquote new and like are looking at artists like Christoph Young and Zin Shin, Ross Draws, Angel Ganov, like all these guys who are just so high up there, uh, who seem like they're the like they're at the peak, the tippity top of the mountain that they're unreachable. If you really want to get good at this, you need to have that sit down conversation with yourself to where you recognize that yes, although you have an art style your art style is probably not your art style because you chose for it to be that way your art style is your art style because you don't understand how you can push something further i'd like to look i like i really enjoy looking at it like a um like a like a i forgot, I forgot what it's called like a like a scale i guess or like a sliding bar a slider uh so like you have like level zero and then you have like level like like 10 right um and i would say that the good goal would be to try to get from level zero to level five and then everything between level five and level 10 is very optional because level zero to level five from how i look at it is from not understanding to i know exactly what's happening here right and like level five for me would be hyper realism right level five for me would be hyper hyper let's change that level five for me would be realism and level 10 would be hyper realism if you can do realism, right, even to like a decent degree, then, you know, you are, you now have the ability to adjust that slider for your art style, right? So like, let's say like you want to draw a nose, right? If you understand how the nose works at its like complex, at its most complex form, right? Then simplifying it should be no problem, like at all. Then when you see like artists do things you like, you can be like, oh, I understand why they did that. And now I can implement it into my own work. Uh, no, and then level 10 is just hyper realism, and that is just pushing it to an even further degree. But for me, I'd say level zero to five is where I'm aiming for. Uh, understanding that realism, uh, and then level you know five to ten is something that I will strive toward so that way I can kind of reach my idols who, the current moment, uh, top three artists, uh, Christoph Young. Uh, Zin Shin and Kan Liu, uh, or Art of 666K, 666K on, I think, most of social medias. Uh, but yeah, uh, that is really all I have for you. Uh, keep trying. If you really want to get better, have that conversation with yourself. Uh, isolate what you want to work on. Start watching those videos and start watching with a purpose. Don't watch them to learn how to draw an eye. You know, watch them to understand how to paint an eye. Watch them to understand how the eye works. Uh, do your studies. Do your your like grid studies which it's just grid studies or what i call is basically just looking at 
an image and then breaking it down to its form. So, you know, you see an eyeball, understand like the eyeball is inside there, then the iris covers it, eyelid, you know, all that, understand why the eye is caved in, how like light affects it, how the form bends around the face essentially. And like anything else, um, but yeah, the uh, time to motivation part, we're gonna look at like early, early work that I did, uh, just to show you guys that growth really is possible. You just have to be dedicated and focused. And during this time, you can still draw what you want, but yeah, just make sure that you're studying with a purpose and not just studying the study. Uh, we'll look at some other things. So this all happened. Uh, this was, this was, I do believe like a while back. This was, yeah, uh, these were pages I made uh, before that summer. It's crazy. Oh, after that summer, yeah. These are some fun images I drew. Uh, but, you know, as I started to practice more, I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna do something like this. And just keep improving, like, like if you look at like this, right? I painted this, and this is my first like three fourths profile painted, and it's just it does not work. It's not. It needs a lot of work, and you can clearly tell I don't I don't understand what's happening here with like the nose and all this and the lips. I don't. Uh, I went back in and tried to like make it look better, but. Eh. And like I drew this, in the same way, that like in a color blocking manner to where I would like block in the color and then block in shadow you know, good tones but like I, I you can see that like, there's no real structure to it so it doesn't work uh, another painting I tried doesn't work um, but yeah just looking up to what you can do after you practice for a little bit and seeing just the gradual transition it's very rewarding to not just yourself but to like employers and other people to see that you are like you can grow like this is one of, i was so proud of this piece and now i look back at this piece and i'm like this isn't good but when this was made which was not even like earlier this year this was made maybe like a few months ago um this was made in may so not that long ago i was super proud of it and now i look back on it and i'm like i can do better a hundred percent i can do better uh, but yeah studying will like it, it will pay off even if you don't think it will um and let's look at these so these are some of the things i wanted to show you guys here's like the actual file for the studies i did so if we turn off the text here uh, turn off my uh, my you know diagrams for how things work how things are working uh <sighs> we'll get the actual cues and what I did for them so you can see how the studies went and if you want to see these being done you can just tune in you can watch the stream but yeah basically combine all the cues in a single layer after they were done a few of the head studies here's the second distillation studies that I did but yeah and now like now I'm working on this piece uh which is a character from a book that I'm designing. Uh, but yeah, uh, more of the story is that if you genuinely practice and practice well, uh, you will see growth. Because even like even this like this drawing that I've done, there's so much I've learned from all the people who have studied like from like indirectly from, especially Christoph Young, uh, from Angel Ganna, from. Mark Brunet from Marco Bucci, all those guys. So yeah, uh, if you're looking to improve, just try not to be too hard on yourself. Uh, have that serious conversation with yourself and then start legitimately studying with a purpose. And with that, we're gonna wrap up the stream. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.